My name is Jake Heggie, and I'm a composer and pianist. Um, I've written the operas uh, Dead Man Walking, Moby Dick, Three Decembers, and It's a Wonderful Life, which will be here at the San Francisco Opera this fall. I was asked by my good friend Patrick Summers, who's the music director at Houston Grand Opera, um, I was asked if I could come up with an idea for a holiday-themed opera. They were going to commission a bunch of different holiday-themed operas. And I thought for a while, he suggested a title to me that really didn't work for me. And then I knew it wasn't going to be, I wasn't going to be writing The Grinch as an opera. And I wasn't going to be writing Charlie Brown Christmas as an opera. Uh, although, <laughs> that feels more like ballet. <laughs> I'm kidding. Um, so I thought, well, what is essentially operatic by nature at its core? What is a story that is operatic at its core that we come to every year that people love and adore, but makes sense as an opera? It makes sense for people to sing this way. It makes sense for it to fill an opera house. And uh, one obvious would be A Christmas Carol, but that's been treated so many different ways. And then all of a sudden, It's a Wonderful Life just popped into my head. And it's interesting because a lot of people have very warm, fuzzy feelings about it's a wonderful life, but at the core of it is a deep, dark drama of a man thinking of taking his life and leaving his entire family on Christmas Eve, which is very big drama and implies big emotion and big journeys and big identity crisis and all kinds of issues that operas deal with really, really well. So it just seemed to suddenly fit really well as an opera. The challenge, of course, is it is an iconic movie that only exists as a movie. Um, it, there isn't a book called It's a Wonderful Life that you can read and interpret many different ways. It exists as the vision that Frank Capra uh, gave it in that amazing film. So we would have to reinvent it somehow for the stage and hope that people would go along with us. But it really started with that invitation from Houston Grand Opera and particularly Patrick Summers. When I asked Gene to join me for this particular opera, he was very excited at first because he adores that movie. He loves it. He watches it every year. He grew up watching it. He loves everything about it. And that's also what made him suddenly go, oh dear, I love it so much. How am I going to find a way to reinvent it and cut it down so that it will work on the opera stage? In the movie, there are about 30 or more named characters. You cannot do that in an opera. So we we had our work cut out for us, but we had had such great experience with Moby Dick, with uh, Three Decembers, and we had done about 50 songs together. Um, and we just worked so well together that he was eager to be on board right from the beginning and take on the challenge, which is something that both of us as creative artists really like to do. I like to take on things that terrify me that inspire me, but also terrify me, so that are gonna, they're gonna push me into new territory where I'm not just gonna be able to repeat myself because I don't wanna just repeat myself. Um, so this, this was an exciting new project that had an element of magic realism, which I love. Um, there are angels and humans interacting. We play with time, we play with space. Um, but it, the, the central issue, the central core of the, of the story appeals to me enormously and it appealed to Gene as well.